<laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we check out Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Welcome back guys. Like I said, we are checking out Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It has been a long time since this game came out. It's almost almost at two years now, I believe. I think uh, later this year it'll be two years. Uh, real quick before we jump right into it, please like and subscribe on this video if you guys haven't already. It's been kind of slow in terms of gaming. Uh, there is Stray that is coming out, I believe this week. But I'm kind of old school and I'll wait till the actual physical copy comes out and that's when I'll be reviewing that, I believe in September. So be sure to be liked and subscribed so you guys can be up to date whenever that video drops. But because it has been a slower in terms of gaming, there's not been a whole lot of like big AAA games or even just like big games that I've been interested in really coming out in the last couple months. I've been, been able to tackle a lot of my backlog games. I got like 30 games. And one of the ones that's been on the list for a very long time has been Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which I originally borrowed from my brother. It's it's kind of weird, the story behind this. Like, So I borrowed it from my brother on PS4 and then played it for a little bit, but he still wanted to play it kind of thing. Like, he had finished it, but then more DLCs came out uh, other than Ragnarok. I, I think there's like three or four DLCs now, and he wanted to play those, so I gave it back to him. And then I ended up getting it for Christmas, this last Christmas, and so I was like... Well, let's jump back into it. It was the PS5 version. So, it, yeah, anyways, it took me a long time to finally get to it. So, yeah, I've played quite a few of the Assassin's Creed games, although it's been a while since I have played an Assassin's Creed game, if that makes sense. I played, like, you know, 1, 2, Brotherhood, Black Flag. Like, I absolutely loved those games growing up. They are some of my most fond memories in gaming that I can remember. But up until like recent years, for some reason, I don't know why, I just have not been that interested in the Assassin's Creed game. I don't know why Origins didn't really, I kind of flew under my radar for some reason, I just didn't seem interested. Odyssey came out, my brother and my brother-in-law were both playing it, and I was like, yeah, that looks pretty cool. Uh, but just never really took the plunge to get it. And then when this one came out and it was Viking setting, I'm like, dude, I gotta get this. You know, God of War was coming out, or I was playing God of War at that time when I was seeing it and I was like, dude, this is good. Been watching like the Vikings TV show, like all this stuff around the same time that this came out and I was like, dude, I gotta play this. So this is the first Assassin's Creed game that I've played literally since Black Flag. Like, so that's how it tells you how long it's been. It's been a hot minute since I played any of them. Uh, I do still plan on playing some of the other Assassin's Creed games, although they're also in the backlog. I only did this one because I kind of already started it and then, you know, we had to finish it talking about the story. This is the newest Assassin's Creed game. I say newest, it's been like a couple years, but it's the newest installment in the Assassin's Creed franchise set in the Viking type era, Viking Norse mythology. You play as Eivor, whose entire clan gets killed while he's young. You run away, you get attacked by a wolf. It almost kills you, but it doesn't, which kind of gives you the name Eivor, Eivor Wolfkist. In the game, they often refer to you as Wolfkist. And you grow up with your uncle, who is a Jarl over his, you know, clan, and your brother Sigurd, Sigurd, which is, I guess, kind of your cousin, but you grow up as brothers. And honestly, the game starts out super great. You wake up after the battle, you're older, you're, you're kind of don't really know who you are, you're trying to discover yourself, and you only get rescued. Uh, at the end, you're like in, you're like tied up. So like the beginning part was actually really good. I really enjoyed that you're just like discovering yourself. You don't know who you are since your parents died. And Sigurd, your brother, decides that he wants to, you know, has bigger ambitions than his father does. His father just kind of wants to bend the knee to this other King Jarl dude. I'm not real sure how that Viking stuff works. But I think there's a, there's Jarls and then there's Kings, right? And so the this his dad, which was Jarl, was bending the knee to this other person. And Sigurd was having no part in that. And he's like, dude, we gotta get out of here. We gotta we're we're Vikings, man. We gotta raid, we gotta pillage. Let's go do that in England. There's tons of stuff over there for us, tons of land, tons of glory. That's what they're looking for. And Eivor's all on board. You and Sigurd and uh, a bunch of people that follow Sigurd and you as well sail off to England. And honestly, like the first part of this game is really good. And I actually really enjoyed it. And like the first couple of hours, I was like, yeah, dude, this is great. Um, and then it's only to later when it starts to, you know, really drag its feet. But we'll get onto that in just a moment. So you get to England, you set up your new camp called Ravensthorpe, your new uh, settlement. 
and it, I actually like the settlement. Uh, as you progress through the game, you upgrade and build your settlement. You can build tons of different parts, like the you know place to raise grain, a place to you know have your birds, your your uh, stables for the 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 horses and whatnot your raid crew like you can build tons of stuff and then grow your settlement i thought that was a lot of fun and so that's kind of like the main gist of like actually the whole game as a whole i would say like that 90 percent of the time what you're doing is you're going through the map of england there's 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 a ton of areas there's like 10 or 15 different areas and the whole goal is to expand your alliances expand your friendships to all these other neighboring places these neighboring territories you know you got wessex you got you know all these big old names that i can you know say besides wessex because that's the only one that's coming to my mind right now but that was literally 90 percent of the game which is kind of where the game like bogs down for me is that you're doing the same thing over and over again but that's like the main gist you know you got your story mission but those are kind of intertwined within doing these things where you're going to a certain area do a couple missions with this one you know you build an alliance with the clan leader or the Jarl or whoever is there sometimes it's Saxons sometimes it's uh, you know you know uh, priest dudes you know it's all that kind of thing and that is the main gist of what you're doing for 90% of the time in Valhalla there are definitely tons of like big twists and turns within the story of Valhalla uh, especially with your brother Sigurd which is I would say the main missions and it kind of sucks because those are some of the greatest missions. I actually really love most of the missions involving your brother, Sigurd, and what he's going through and, like, your guys' story together where Sigurd believes that he's a god and you're just like, whoa, bro, like, what, what are you talking about? And he gets involved with the the order, the hidden order, which I guess is kind of, I guess, like the uh, equivalent to the Knights Templars, I guess, of the old. I mean, like I said, I haven't played the last couple, so I don't know if I'm missing something here. But basically... They're the order. They're the bad guys. They're going against the, I guess the uh, the brotherhood because you got your you know assassins there, Bassam and the other guy that's basically just in the scroll room the whole time. But yeah, all their stuff that involving Sigurd is all really good. I love all the twists and turns with it. Like I said, unfortunately, you have to literally play every single territory. You have to take over every single territory. And I thought that I could get away with just doing a couple. You know, just to get the story to progress, and I could do like these, you know, areas after the, uh, you know, after the end game kind of stuff, right? Nope. I literally had England pacified before I even got to the end of Sigurd's journey, your journey towards the end. And it's a real shame because, like, the story is pretty good. There's just so much fluff in the middle that I feel like they could literally just axe out, cut out, and this game would have been so much better. I kid you not, it literally took me 99 hours, not 100, 99 hours, that was close to 100 hours, to finally beat the game. Granted, I did grind a little bit for certain things, and we'll get to that in a minute, but to actually finish the main campaign took me 99 hours, which is ridiculous because, like, literally, I would say 40 hours of this game can literally just be cut out, and it's forgettable, and uh, it just hurts me to know that I wasted my time. But uh, at the same time, it was really good. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's really good, but also there's a lot of just fluff Valhalla is no short with its huge cast of characters like I said every time you go to these new areas that you're trying to friendship to you know make an alliance with you meet new characters and it follows like I said the same routine you go to this new area you meet some new characters you do four or five side quests or I shouldn't even say side quests just four or five quests in general with these characters and then you build an alliance with them. They're like, yes, we will join you, Eivor. Or, you know, you have my back whenever you need me type of deal. And then it's done. And you rinse and repeat that for literally every single territory on the map. Every single one. Even, like, the little tiny, like, city ones that are just, like, the little circles. You have to do them for every single one. And the, at the first couple hours, it was not bad. It was just, like, after the 10th time you've done it, it's really old. And actually, most of the characters are pretty forgettable. I can only really remember a few, you know, outside of Eivor, which is who you play as, Sigurd, uh, Ranvi, uh, Basm, and, you know, that's, you know, that's pretty much it as far as, like, characters that I actually remember, and those were main characters, 
pretty much all the side characters from all these different places are ex they're they're forgettable. I really can't tell you a single one. I kind of have you know ideas of what the quests were, but overall I I couldn't tell you their name. Couldn't tell you what the position was. Forgettable. Switching gears here to the combat. The combat at first is incredibly fun. It's super brutal, and I enjoyed almost every moment of it. Although it does get a little bit repetitive at times. From dual wielding axes to freaking mowing down people with a giant like sword, battle axe, whatever it was, I had a blast with the combat. It was a lot of fun. There is a decent variety of weapons. There wasn't as much as I, you know, something like Dark Souls would be. There's like, I would say that there's probably four or five different weapons for each weapon class. Like you got your, you know, your single-handed axes and you got your two-handed Dane axes, your great swords, you know, maces, spears, short swords. So there's like, it does have its variety of weapons, but, and there's about three or four, at least that I obtained um, on my playthrough. About three or four different weapons in each weapon type so it wasn't like crazy but they were all like different enough that they each had their own specific you know stat or perk to them so they were like vastly different for the most part instead of having like a ton of weapons that were just like slightly different you got this where they're like oh, okay this is you know these are obviously different they have different perks and abilities so I actually really like that I, I actually don't like having like a ton of weapons to choose from just because I find that most of them are just trash anyway and then I'll never end up using and this one it was a lot more you know focused and I was able to experiment I think a little bit more just because my choices were a little bit more limited and I'm like okay so I got four or five different Dane axes let me decide which one's the best of this one and go for that. I know some people might not like that but I actually didn't mind you know one of my favorite weapons actually was this giant Dane axe that was like almost like frozen it had like ice frozen to it and it looked super cool and it actually did some of my highest damage um actually one of the coolest ones too other than that one was thor's hammer and unfortunately i didn't really get to use thor's hammer all that well because thor's hammer is literally like one of the last things you can get so when i do end up playing the dlcs i guess i'll have the thor's hammer for that but thor's hammer is more of like a trophy at least in my eyes it was more of like a trophy weapon because one, you have to destroy all of the order, you know, first. And it, well, that's not even for the hammer. It's like you have to get all of the pieces of gear, all of Thor's armor to wear before you can even pick it up. And you can get four of them fairly quickly, I, I, if I remember correctly. And then, like, the last piece, which was, like, the cape or something like that, you literally had to kill all of the order. And Basim's uh, assassin friend gives it to you, and then you equip all five pieces, and then you can pick up the hammer. And I was like, I was, I, I, I'll put it here on screen somewhere. And it was super cool. And I really, that was my main goal. And that's probably what took me much longer to do this than normally. Is that I really wanted Thor's hammer. And so I did grind it out to get all of the order. And I got Thor's hammer. Uh, which kind of is our segue into the armor. There is a ton of armor in this game. I should, well, I shouldn't say a ton of armor. There is a lot of armor options. But it's, it's like weird. In the base game, there's only like five or so sets there could be more than that but when i was like playing that's as many as i got and when i was looking it up it can look like i missed a whole lot but there's about five or six like base game sets of armors and they all were like okay with thor's armor probably being one of the coolest armors but also one of the armors that you don't get to the very end of the game literally like there's like five base game armors and like 20 armors in the store which is ridiculous it it just made me so annoyed because not only were there way more armors in the store it's like the armors that were in the store were way cooler than the base game armor you have like just your regular like fur coat which i mean it still looked cool don't get me wrong i still liked it but it, when you look at the armors in the store you're like dang dude these ones look way cooler but they're all locked behind paywalls all the different steeds are locked behind paywalls yeah, they have that little, like, kid that does, like, the weird quest that if you get enough opals, you can exchange for, you know, gear set, you know, pieces of gear or different mounts you can ride. But they all cost, like, a hundred and something, and you don't get very much from those little quests. I think I got, like, you get, like, ten. I could be wrong on that, but I just remember I wasn't getting very many. And you only get, like, pieces. So it's like if you wanted a whole set of a specific gear set, like... Who knows how long that would be to get, or you'd have to just re, just go to the store and buy it. So I hated that 
90% of the gear and even weapons, like the cool weapons, were all locked behind paywalls. And it's nothing, I mean, I'm well, not too surprised because Far Cry 6 did this and, you know, a few other Ubisoft games that I've played all do the same thing where they give you, as far as cosmetics go, they give, they give you a handful and then they have a big stack over here and they're like, check this out. These are freaking sick. You know, $10. Can I have $10? $20. Can I have $20? You know what I mean? Like, it's just annoying and I hated it. Switching gears to the enemies here. The enemies are kind of mixed. I feel like sometimes that they attacked me and sometimes they were just really dumb. Like, no joke, there's a few times where I set my controller down because my kid was talking to me or, you know, something like that. My controller died, whatever it was, and I just was just standing there. And there's a few times where the enemies just, like, did not know what to do and they just stood there. And I'm like, are they not going to attack me? And there's a few times where I'm literally attacking a bunch of people and there's a, you know, a whole group of enemies right over here. And they're just standing there like, yeah, some, you know, and I don't know if that was like a glitch because there were times where like, you know, I did get jumped by a bunch of enemies. But at the same time, like I was so over leveled. It felt like I was not really leveled up at the beginning, but like by the, like the mid game to late game, dude, like no matter where I went, I was incredibly powerful. And especially with my Dane Axe being as high as it was, I literally... And it had like a high crit value too, so it's like almost every shot was just like mass critical damage and they'd instantly die almost every time. So like the enemy AI was like... Could be dumb at times, but sometimes I felt like that they were all attacking. I don't know, it was weird. I just thought the AI could have been better. It wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. There are quite a few boss fights in the game, and for the most part, I thought all the boss fights were fun and probably the best combat fights in, within the whole game. You know, like, yeah, you are you could take over the castles and you're, you know, fighting a bunch of enemies at one time, but it's literally just one hit kill almost everything. The boss fights, on the other hand, were a lot of fun. Some of my favorites being the Zealots that are like the Traveling Order. Those ones were a lot of fun. And then also the... The, the things that you get Thor's armor, like these three witches, those ones were probably the coolest boss fights in the entire game. Like, hands down. Like, all, like, the mythical, like, witches. One was doing, like, lightning, and the other one's doing, like, blood, rain, and poison. They were a lot of fun. And I wish that there was a lot more of those types of bosses, but there really wasn't. But they were also awesome. Also fun. Not often. <laughs> I can't talk. There is an upgrade system in the game. And I thought it was cool at first, but then I really quickly realized that I didn't like it as much as it I thought I would. It looks cool because it's like a star system, you know, you connect all the stars and it makes like a, you know, the symbol up in the sky like it's a wolf or a bear. And it looked cool, but I hate that you can't see like past it because a lot of the upgrade tree like paths are clouded out. So it makes it really hard, especially early game, to kind of focus on a build like specifically there was two things that I got like one of them I got pretty early was the auto loot which I just happened to be on the right tree to get the auto loot which was very helpful and then there's another one that was in a totally different branch that was like you can loot like people when I shoot them with arrows right and I can loot them if I get a headshot with an arrow and another one that I got pretty late in the game but it helped a lot with boss fights and a few other things was the where you dodge and you could slow down time. Basically, once that happened, I was literally invincible. Like, nothing could stop me. Like, the game was almost broken. Like, it was too easy at that point. But I hated that, like, you couldn't see the whole skill tree at first. There's a ton of skills. Most of them are just meaningless skills like, you know, plus two to armor, plus two to critical attack, you know, plus five for health. Like, so they're all, like, meaningless perks. But there were a few like skills that I thought were actually useful, like the auto loot or things of that nature. Valhalla is open world, and the map is friggin' huge. And I talked about this a little bit at the beginning, but I also feel like I feel like the game is too big. Like there's there's plenty of stuff to do. Almost every town or settlement that you went to had like a drinking contest, had a dice game, which was also really fun. Like, a lot of these mini games were fun, like the horse racing, you know, uh, Ol Olrog or something like that was the dice game. A lot of fun, but I just felt like the game was just so huge with almost nothing in between. It was very empty in, in between these towns, right? There wasn't a whole lot going on. And I really just felt like that this game could have just been cut in half and would have been a thousand times better. Like a nice, sh not even short, like 30, 25 to 30 hours is not a short game by any means.
but it's definitely shorter than the 99 hours that it took me to beat it. So I felt like if this literally had it cut in half, or even 75% of just like the repetitiveness, this game could have been so much better. I did talk about this just a minute ago, but the mini games I thought were pretty fun. Specifically, Olrog I thought was a lot of fun. It's like this dice game. Uh, it gives me a lot of like Gwent vibes, where it's a game inside a game. Although it's not as fun as Gwent, not nearly as fun as Gwent, but I was surprised at how much I did like it. And every time I went to a new settlement or town, city, whatever you want to call it, and I saw the dice icon, I made it a point to go out of my way to play the new dice player. It was a lot of fun. I actually enjoyed the Olorok game quite a bit. Talking a little bit, like I said, with the open world, I know I'm a little bit all over the place here, but I said this at the beginning, it was just annoying how long the game was because you had to complete the entire map to can you know continue the storyline. For example, like the main quest all revolve around Eivor and Sigurd, his brother. And in order to progress it, you had to unlock all of the areas or pacify England, basically, is what I ended up doing before I even got to the end credits. Or not even end credits, the, uh, the last mission, per se. And it's just like really long, and I just wish that you wouldn't, like, it was different, like that you didn't have to go through all that. Because it was just, it was just long. On the flip side, though, I've talked a little, you know, negatively about a lot of these missions, how they rinse and repeat. The Asgard missions were a ton of fun, or the Jotunheim mission, were basically like the ice uh, mission. Basically, all the Asgard, like the mythical stuff, was a lot of fun, where you're playing memories, so, like you drink like this potion from one of the witches, and you play memories as Odin and Loki. And all those ones were a lot of fun. I think there was three total missions, Asgard missions, and they were a lot of fun. Just like the Sigurd missions, these ones were top tier and some of my favorite missions of the whole game. I wish that there was more of that, but, you know, it is, you know, that's what we got. Also, it's weird because, like, the Eivor stuff was really good, but, like, the Layla stuff where you're a present day out of the Animus was just really bad and just boring. I just did not like the Layla stuff at all. That and kind of jumping into like the graphics here a little bit, it just seemed like the facial stuff for Eivor and a lot of the characters like in the, you know, past, I guess, tense you would call it, in the Viking era were really good. Like all the close-ups on Eivor and Sigurd were looked fantastic. They looked really good. This is one of the best looking Assassin's Creed game by far. Like it looks incredible. Minus the present day stuff. Layla literally looked like a train wreck. Like, it looked like that they spent almost all their time on Eivor and Ranvi and all those characters and making the world look so beautiful. But then when it came to the present day people, they, 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 they just looked like PS3 models. And that might be a bit extreme. They just did not look as good. One of the things that I did not like really whatsoever was the climbing. The climbing in this game is flat out terrible. I don't care who you are or what you say, the climbing in this game sucks so bad. There are so many times where I'm climbing up, you know, a wall and I'm trying to hop into a window and Eivor would literally just climb all around the window like six times before going into the window or a similar instance where you're trying to go down a hole and I'm trying to climb down the hole like I have many other times and he just won't go down the hole. And if you get too close to a wall, there's plenty of times where Eivor just starts jumping on the wall and starts climbing and I'm like, stop. There are so many other games that copied this idea and did it so much better. Ghost of Tsushima, uh, Shadow of Mordor, or Shadow of War, I guess both of those games, copied the same Assassin's Creed type, like climb any, you know, side, cliffside, but they do it so much better. Like, how could you be the original creators and then have other people just do it better? And you've made, like, what, 16 Assassin's Creed games and this is still terrible? Yeah, the climbing, it sucks. Really does. Since we're already talking about performance, I did play this game a little bit on the PS5 I play, or PS4. I played about 30 hours before I got it myself and was playing on the PS5. And it is almost a night and day difference how the different versions are. The PS4, PS4 version, I didn't realize was so bad until I played the PS5 version. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this ver like the PS4 version is terrible. It is very buggy. It is not, not, not like cyberpunk buggy but like i encountered a lot more glitches i encountered a lot more frame rate drops and the ps5 version ran pretty smooth for like 90 percent of the time i felt like there was very 
little hiccups with frame rates. There's very little hiccups with glitching. I barely had that happen. Overall, PS5 version ran great. And I played both of these, the like PS4 version and the PS5 version, on a PS5. So that I can't even tell you what the an actual <laughs> running a PS4 version on a PS4 would be. All I can think of is that it's got to be worse than what I was playing it at. So with that being said, let's go into my final thoughts. Uh, like I said, this is the first Assassin's Creed game that I've been remotely, you know, you know, attracted to in a long time. Literally since Black Flag, and Black Flag came out. I think I played Black Fat Black Flag on my Xbox 360. Like it has been a long time since I played any Assassin's Creed game. And overall, this one is the most visually appealing. I still don't think it is my favorite Assassin's Creed game. I definitely thought Black Flag, as far as like story goes, Black Flag and like Brotherhood and Assassin's Creed 2 are some of my top favorite games, at least in the Assassin's Creed genre. And this one, it's okay. I liked it. I liked it for what it was. The combat was fun for the most part. Uh, I loved the story, although not as good, like I said, as Black Flag or, you know, Assassin's Creed 2. I had a blast, you know, despite its flaws with how long it was and the climbing the climbing is just awful although the game was long i think i made it a little bit longer on myself because i did want i was greedy and i wanted thor's hammer and i wanted thor's gear set and so i did have to grind for those so i guess i made the game longer than i should have have but despite all its flaws i still had a great time with assassin's creed valhalla and it actually makes me exci excited for whatever assassin's creed game they do next if I were to give Assassin's Creed Valhalla a rating, I know it's been a couple years. There's been lots of updates. I have not played the new DLCs, so those are next. But the base game by itself, I would give Assassin's Creed Valhalla an 8 out of 10. I actually really enjoyed it. I would definitely play it again. Uh, that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys thought of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe as we're going through a lot more of my older titles that I just haven't had a chance to you know get through yet like I'm playing until dawn you know Detroit becoming human like th those are just the ones that I know that I downloaded on my PlayStation but I got like 30 games that I haven't beaten yet so be sure to be subscribed so you guys can be up to date with those videos and uh, yeah that's gonna be it for the video guys thanks for watching uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you guys on the next video